Right, well, what happened just a few moments ago, an entirely large group kind of flooded this section of street, We're headed the toward the police motorcade, or toward We're the pre presidential lies. motorcade, rather. A group uh, of, well, we can only kind of assume they might police. be yeah. anarchists. Yeah. Yeah. It's rather rowdy around here. We've got bodyguards, we've got security, private security around us. You know what happens when demonstrations go on in the street? Most people, like you, I presume, are intelligent and the point of view they want to express. You know? But others stand on the periphery and throw their bombs. Their bombs. I did see a few moments ago a number of people wearing masks across their face. Uh, bandanas, t-shirts, things like that, and wearing uh, generally, typically anarchist colors. And some of them were confronting the police, telling them, uh, well, calling them names, quite frankly. Police did tackle one of the protesters with a bandana around his face. He was dressed in black. He was carrying a backpack. Don't know exactly what he uh, did to get the police upset with him, but they did take him away and confiscate his equipment, 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 his, his equipment, his equipment. Well, we can only assume they might be anarchists. A number of them were those who were wearing all black. They had bandanas over their faces. And generally, they will not answer any questions from the media. They don't want to talk about why they're here. We get calls from our viewers to say, why are you giving these folks airtime? Yes, hi, Deb. We're in the middle of everything right here. It's been pretty peaceful until now. But you can see just beyond the signs here, they're starting to burn an American flag you can see the smoke in the air and that's usually when things get started is when someone lights the american flag on fire the assistant police chief showed one item found during past presidential visits it looks like a bottle cap with nails in it it was it was pretty violent here just about 15 minutes ago as you said i got caught up in it and it was scary clash with police rowdy confronting the police anarchists dressed all in black bandanas over their faces refuse to give away their identity There's a lot of anger quite chaotic very angry rowdy crowd people like this scary there was some violence wasn't there that's the whole point i guess of these protesters indeed that's the whole point i guess that's what they're trying to say scary shadowy weird nasty antisocial dangerous violent watch your kids so many uh, young kids uh, were brought into this protest by their parents perhaps in knowing that this thing was going to get a little bit on the violent side they're they're scapegoating a certain group of people it looks as if some of the protesters are tempting police and they're making strange assumptions but they're not going to change very many minds blatant assumptions and they're ignoring the real threat that's right there in front of their faces is it really an accident they are part of the corporate police state they're very concerned about anti-capitalist behavior and the growth of anti-capitalist anti-consumer ideals we're cutting into their profit margins they want to demonize us. They want us to be the enemy. Bandanas over their faces to obscure their faces and their identities. They really make a lot out of the fact that people don't want to tell them who they are. They don't even like to have their picture taken. In fact, they don't like it either. So you don't think it's tough? No, no, no. Listen, listen. But you're don't stick that in my face. Talk to me as me a person. Don't stick and this in your face? That's what you're doing, aren't you? Isn't that what you do for a living? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't like it either. When you film them and they suspect that maybe their words will be used against them or their words won't be used the way they were intended, they don't like it either, you know? I mean, we're all human. We don't want other people lying about us or, or misusing our image or our words. They don't like it any more than we do. So. It's not such a big deal. It's not such a hard to understand thing that we don't want to talk to the corporate media. I mean, this is their reaction when we try to talk to them. What is your name? Uh, I don't need to give you my name. Okay, but if you're with Channel 12. Yep. So you're a reporter for Channel 12. No, I'm a photographer with them. You're a photographer named. I don't need to give you my name. Uh -huh. People like this who refuse to give away their identity. I don't need to give you my name. There's a reason people don't want to share their identities with the corporate media. The corporate media is part of the police state. They're working hand in glove with the police state. In point of fact, local news stations have been selling footage of Portland protesters to Homeland Security through MOBA Media. They've been selling us out. They are the brown shirts. We have a right to protect ourselves from that. Ask yourself why is Homeland Security interested in footage of nonviolent political protesters? Why do they want your face? Why do they want to know who you are? And why do they have that right? 
and then ask yourself why the corporate media is selling them your face and why do they have that right while they were focusing on us with our bandanas <laughs> in our black gear, they were completely, it was like all those robocops were invisible. They were wearing black too, and they were wearing masks too, and they really were armed. They didn't have equipment. <laughs> they had fucking guns. They had guns and ammo, and they were willing to use it. There were a few confrontations with police in Columbia Park near campus. Officers forcibly moved some protesters. But those were the exceptions. To borrow a phrase from the president's father, this was a kinder, gentler presidential visit. A kinder, gentler presidential visit. I mean, see, there's a story right there. If that's kind and gentle, where the hell do we live? We're watching footage of the police throwing people down and beating people with sticks, driving around on a goddamn tank. But it was a kinder and gentler protest? Why don't they talk a little bit more about that story? I mean, tanks, for God's sake. Loaded guns, pepper spray, chemical weapons, all manner of nastiness. This was a kinder, nice. gentler presidential visit. That's one of my favorite clips, because it really shows exactly what I'm talking about. Those people just spent the entire day walking around, ignoring the real big story there. What has happened, Shauna, is we're at the intersection of Willamette and North Stamford, and throughout this entire gathering, people have been running toward that Lombard intersection, which they say is the closest intersection to the presidential motorcade. And so they've been trying to get very close to that motorcade, Shauna. I've spoken with several people off camera. They wouldn't go on camera with me. Uh, people that are wearing the black outfits, people that are wearing the mask, about why they're so angry. And they say with the corporate media that everything's edited. They say that certain pictures like the flag burning are played over and over and over again. But they wouldn't go on camera and talk to me about it. So there you go. Um, that's the latest from here. And uh, we'll bring you more as it comes in. Back to you, Steve. Well, maybe let them know about some of the raw video we've been showing, Amy. Maybe that will calm, calm them down a bit, right? Well, let's, let's hope so. Keep it here on K2, folks. So this is raw video, folks. Apparently being assaulted by protesters. Watch this. We've been watching these protesters gather all morning. No, 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 Amy Clark, are you with us now to talk to us about what okay, happened? Okay, they're coming to us now. Amy Clark, Natalie here, can you tell us about what okay, happened? Okay, we were just in the middle of a huge fight uh, about 10 minutes ago. I, I told you that there was a group of about 20 people that moved into this protest. They were all wearing masks, they were all wearing black, some of them wearing goggles. That's what changed. And uh, over the last 10 minutes, certain parts of this protest have become violent. And all of a sudden, um, we have become the target. Well, Natalie, it was quite a sight just a few minutes ago. We saw photographer Brian Garvin along with Amy Clark. They they were caught in the middle of this rowdy crowd, as was John Wilson. John, John, tell me what you saw. Tell me what you saw a few minutes ago. There was somebody came through here with a with a sign, and it was there was a confrontation. And what happened after there was a confrontation? There was some violence, wasn't there? Well, they, somebody over here left. Their sign was torn, and they left. There was some pushing and shoving. As we saw the people in the middle just being totally surrounded by the crowd. We saw some, some punches going on, people being punched. It was quite chaotic, just as it is now. Every time we go live, everybody gathers around trying to get on the air. We have a number of people like this who refuse to give away their identity. One of them wouldn't even talk to me, wouldn't give me his name, would not tell me where he was from. Excuse me, sir, that's enough. As you can see, around here. We've got bodyguards, we've got security, private security around us. Elaine, we're going to take it from you. Uh, Brian Garvin, our photographer, was just, he's afraid he's going to lose his camera. 
camera at this point because people keep pulling on the cords, keep pulling on the camera. They don't like the media, clearly, and every time we go on camera live, they start out like this. There, some of them are actually yeah, let's, let's get away from those folks tape if we can. of us and taking let's go You would think they'd make their point in a more articulate fashion if they just uh, protested peacefully, but that's not the way it happens every time. you got to wonder what message they're trying to get across compared to what message is actually coming across when we see this type of thing happen. You're exactly right. I'm going to take a break. Come back after this. Fuck the corporate media! Fuck the corporate media! Fuck the corporate media! They said fuck the corporate media and they said the corporate media lies. I think that was the message they were trying to get across. I think they were pretty clear because it was live TV. I was also corporate media lies. Um, corporate media lies. This is obviously on live lies. TV right now. You can hear it's getting a uh, little out of corporate hand. So I'm going to toss it back to you so we can get out of here because it just could become violent. What's really pissing her off right there is that people are saying what they want to say without being controlled because it is live TV. You can hear somebody's voice saying corporate media lies and that's why they're cutting away from her. Not because she's in any kind of danger, you know, we can see in the footage she's not in danger, but we can hear somebody telling the truth and they don't want that. They're the corporate media. They're all about lies. They're not about giving the people a voice. They're not about hearing what anyone has to say. They're about obscuring the truth, not telling the truth. Don't talk to them! They're lying! They're lying! They're lying! You saw the clips that KATU provided. Um, what did you think of those? I thought they were very misleading. Uh, I was there with the group, and we weren't all in goggles and wearing black and all that. Actually, we were pretty much going for pink. And uh, we went in there, and it... It just wasn't how the media portrayed it. Tell me in your words what happened. We looked up and we noticed this guy with a sign on it that says, Portland welcomes Bush. And we're like, eh, probably wrong place for that, you know, but whatever. You know, there were some other uh, people there that felt that same way. But then on the back side of the sign, which you never saw on KTU, uh, it said, if God intended, intended for there to be fags, he would have made it Adam and Steve. And we're, you know, a revolutionary queer group. And so we're like, uh-uh, you know, this is our cue. And so he marches through the crowd, you know, and with his sign, you know, his fag bashing sign. And so we pretty much got up, you know, with our pink and black flags and uh, went over there to say what's up. You're surrounded by queers! You're surrounded by queers! We were kind of just getting in his face about it because he's making this, you know, blatant, hateful statement. God destroyed so Sodom and he's going to destroy gays too. We were chanting, we're fabulous, don't fuck with us, we're here, we're queer. And you never saw the back of the sign on KTU. Uh, about 10 minutes ago, I, I told you that there was a group of about 20 people that moved into this protest. They were all wearing masks. They were all wearing black, some of them wearing goggles. That's what changed. They were all wearing masks. They were all wearing black. That's what changed. That's what changed. What changed. What changed. Violet, violet, violet. I'm not going to let it happen. You back off. Keep your fist to yourself. Keep your fist to yourself. This homophobe was perpetuating this, you know, hateful message. Destroy gays! Destroy! Destroy gays! Destroy gays! So we jumped up. Somebody jumped up and grabbed a sign and ripped it up. And 
that's what happened. We were the big scary people that, you know, started the big old riot in the middle of protest, I guess. John, tell me what you saw. Tell me what you saw a few minutes ago. There was somebody came through here with a with a sign and it was there was a confrontation. And what happened after there was a confrontation? There was some violence, wasn't there? Well, they, somebody over here left. Their sign was torn and they left. There was some pushing and shoving. As we saw the people in the middle just being totally surrounded by the crowd, we saw some some punches going on, people being punched. It was quite chaotic. That's what changed. That's and, what uh, changed. Over the last 10 minutes, certain parts of this protest have become violent, and all of a sudden, um, we have become the target. Fortunately, we had security guards surrounding us, otherwise we would have been in real trouble. So do you think grabbing a sign counts as a violent act? <laughs> I don't see the destruction of property as a violent act, as an act of violence. Uh, and no. <laughs> there was some violence. Violent violence. You hear you know, queer bashing all around you. I mean, it's not just, you know, with people uh, with, you know, waving obvious signs and everything. It's little remarks here and there and uh, a lot on the corporate media. It felt good to be able to say, no, that ain't right, you know. And uh, it felt great to have the other people that weren't in my revolutionary career group behind us and supporting us. And those are the people you saw in the video confronting the guy more. Like we circled him and we grabbed a sign and then everybody else is like, what's up? You back off! Keep your fist to yourself! Keep your fist to yourself! Come on! That's what happened there. And the block actually broke it up. But you won't hear that from KATU. Why do you think the corporate media didn't show that context? Because then it would have been honest. Um, Corporate media probably didn't show it. Should I get the kitty out of the way? No, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> uh, corporate media probably didn't show that footage just because. Then uh, we might gain support. We certainly understand your viewpoint at home that perhaps we shouldn't be covering these people, these people, these people, these people. You guys actually need private security to get the story anymore? Well, Lamet and Stanford. Excuse me, People must really hate you because you're such liars, huh? You know why they're headed that way? Can you tell me? Is it uh, going to be media worthy? That's a, that's a, I'm sure it will be. Not KATU worthy. You guys lie. All the time. No, really you tell ashamed. terrible you lies. Know, you guys are not supposed to take sides. Just you are not supposed to take sides. sides. Then why would we be in the crowd? Time. You guys lie shamelessly. Have you ever I don't need to sometime? listen to you if you're calling me a liar because you are a liar. totally wrong. Bye. You are a liar and you need a security guard to protect you because you're a liar. All right, so that wasn't my proudest moment. To be honest with you, Elaine Murphy seems like she's probably a very nice woman in real life. But I was angry, and I was rightfully angry, because what she does for a living is wrong. What she does for a living is hurting us. It's hurting us. She is working for the corporate media and they are building consent for the corporate police state that is, is oppressing us. She spent the entire day building consent for, for a crackdown on, on us. You know, she spent the entire day scapegoating and, and accusing people of being violent who were not being violent and implying that people who didn't want to tell her who they were were bad and implying that people who are wearing bandanas are are up to no good. This rowdy crowd. She spent the entire day ignoring the fact that the real threat was looming all around her driving around in fucking tanks paid for by taxpayer money. Their plan was to keep the people down, to keep the people from being heard, and that's what they did and that's what she did. And so what she was doing was wrong. I would have liked to have been more articulate about 
it. I would have liked to have been able to make her see what I was trying to say, but, you know, at the moment I was too goddamn angry. Can you blame me, though? I mean, look what they did with these stories. Look what they did. The same thing they do every time. They're the corporate media. They lie. The only problems I'm seeing is uh, when, uh, you know, a marked K2 camera goes in. We're kind of undercover right now. We're walking around with camcorders. But when a marked K2 camera goes in, they have uh, some, they encounter some resistance. You know, Get corporate media is being shouted at them. People will hold flags in front of them. Whereas if you walk around with a camcorder, you can pretty much go unencumbered and hit whatever you want. And that's what we're doing right now.